been there's lots been going on behind the scenes yeah. uh, in world rugby we had the elections this last weekend yeah. interesting way they did that electronically they were going to give two weeks to get the votes in yeah. after two days they declared big bull uh the winner 28 votes to 23. did that surprise you uh the margin surprised me a bit i thought it would be a bit tighter with uh Pijer. i knew he had the whole of uh, sansa and i felt that they may have been able to influence one or two of the smaller countries they didn't uh the big votes obviously japan's two went to uh went to bill beaumont is, is that because france voted with with is that because england voted for them for the world cup yeah but uh, bill yeah. basically got them the world cup and then bill so, so that was the that that was that was quid pro quo yeah and then uh with Laporte coming in as uh, unopposed vice president. That's a dangerous thing for rugby, I think. Very dangerous, eh? And uh, to align with Bill for the next four years, and he'll be 72, so he'll be out. So Laporte is seen the way to become the chair is to be the vice chair and then become the chair. He got the African vote. The president there has been staying in Paris for the last 40 years. Uh, same with the 2000. Isn't there an office down the road in, uh, in Newlands? The, uh, rugby Africa's offices are in Sari's offices, yeah. but the president lives in, uh, in Paris. And then the Fiji and Samoa, which were the two very influential votes that you would ordinarily think would go with the Sanzar allowance. Yeah, but right. over time, they've been very disillusioned with New Zealand. They felt there hasn't been a financial investment into the game. There hasn't been an investment into the island uh, rugby. Who will come to the fore with a checkbook? France. And uh, so France has kind of invested in uh, various forms of development there one of them being taking half their players to play for france and um so do you do you think that bill beaumont's a good choice i think he's a safe choice for them it's what the six nations know it, it entrenches they they were very very afraid of pigeon and uh what the, he was going to and the noises he was talking revolution the game can never be the same again old boys club must be broken up goes with what will the Colin old said. the old farts yeah he, he yeah. mentioned that in, a, well, in his in his campaigning yeah and as he said, he, he knew he was going to be up against it when he wrote to all six Six Nations CEOs to just discuss rugby in general, the vision of the game, and not one of them, re uh, Wales, the only one who responded to basically say they're not interested in chatting. Uh, so uh, he knew uh, that it was going Beaumont's way in terms of the, the, the Northern Bloc as such and the, the traditional Six Nations. And already you see Bill coming out and saying Six Nations will not be touched in a global calendar. Those dates stay in place. It's yeah. all he's ever known for 150 years. So... A relic from the past or a revolution from the future. I would have loved it to have been Peugeot, but you, in a way you always knew it was going to be Bill Beaumont. I just didn't think it would be quite as decisive, 28 to 23. Um, yeah. Well, as a Welshman, I would, I, would, I would love, it would be no, nothing worse than to see the Six Nations disbanded. I mean, it's... Uh, well, they would never disband in the Six Nations. It's like looking at when do they play the tournament. So this, Peugeot has been big on uh, a global season. Yeah. Uh, a world championship season um, where you certain dates may have to be adjusted. So you've got your club structures that are strong and then you go into an international yeah. window. No. And that's something that was rejected a year, six months ago. That's yeah. back on the table now. But the big thing there also, Beaumont, with the island uh, two teams is he's going to propose that, that, that if you've played for the All Blacks or Australia or England or France and you yeah. are of Samoan or Fijian heritage, yeah. That you, if you have a three-year or five-year stand-down period, meaning if you haven't played for that team for the last five years, you become eligible to play for them again. So you've got the likes of a Charles Pietal, who uh, played for the All Blacks, but he's of Tongan descent, and he hasn't played for the yeah. All Blacks for five years. He could become eligible. Um, Amar Nonu could become eligible for a year just to play for, for Samoa. He hasn't played for the All Blacks for five years. Yeah. The counter to that, as Peugeot said, one, he found a patronizing towards the island players, the youngsters. And are you giving a player who's chosen another country uh, a kind of send-off to go play for two years mm. with a country of his, uh, of his origin, origin yeah. birth, potentially? And in many cases, those players weren't born in those islands. They were born in New Zealand or born in Australia yeah. or born in England. So there was a lot of politicking going on there. But Laporte, I think, big behind Beaumont. And Why is Laporte not good for rugby, in your opinion? He, he's a very very powerful administrator but a very political administrator yeah. so if you're looking at rugby as a business uh a greater spread breaking up the six nations breaking up a, a, a southern a southern hemisphere based game or a northern hemisphere based game and you want a global collective i thought Peugeot was the best suited because even though he's from argentina 
he spoke very much from a global perspective. He looked at the smaller nations and said if rugby's ever going to position itself as a global game and not an elitist game, things have to change. Yeah. And those old boy clubs just don't change, not up north. Uh, you see Brent Impey of New Zealand has come out very strongly, the chairman of New Zealand, to say, we voted for Peugeot. We accept the decision. It's democratic. The Bill Beaumont is there. But certain things have to change or the game's going to falter and it's going to stall. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of heat put on him. But Laporte is going to be the driving force. He's, he's got that, that hunger. He's, I mean, he controls everything in France. When he controlled rugby, sports ministry, he kind of uh, put things in place. He will be the next, pre, uh, the next chair of world rugby. And uh, you just saw how he manipulated everything when it came to the South African 2023 um, World Cup. When the independents said South Africa was best place, they recommended them. He came out immediately and said, it's not over yet. We've got two weeks. We're starting to campaign. South Africa back then wrote to World Rugby to say he's broken every, every kind of Protoc ethical protocol. protocol. And good practices. Yeah. They never, never, had, uh, never kind of took him on. They allowed all that uh, uh, politicking to go on. And he got on the votes. They got on a jet. They flew everywhere. Yeah. And votes that were promised to South Africa then went to France. And Bill Beaumont smiled and said, well, France still a great choice. There wasn't much between the two countries. Uh, there was a hell of a lot between the two. So I, I, I think it's a step back. Do you think uh, they could get away with the stuff that they do if they were, say, if, they were, if the sport was as big as soccer? Not at all. And, and, no. and you see, it's not. And the money's not there at the moment. And the, yeah. your, your nation base isn't there. You've yeah. effectively got 10 teams. Yeah. Uh, even though rugby's paraded as this global game. Yeah. You've got 10 teams that are fairly competitive. And there's a top six and definitely yeah. uh, a bottom four out of those 10. Yeah. I, just, I just hope that there is a form of shift, that the Southern Hemisphere Alliance is strong enough to try and engineer some, some form of change. But well, it, 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 does the margin of victory show, show a closer race than it has been in the past? No, I think it shows Southern Hemisphere still aligned, Northern Hemisphere still aligned, yeah. with a dash of smaller Southern Hemisphere going to the north with your Fijis and your Samoas. What's disappointing for me is when, I, when you look at and a couple of the newspaper reports from the weekend is please don't lose Peugeot from the game. And he's not involved anywhere now. Yeah. So he went from being the vice chair to running for chair to not being on the executive, not being on the mix at all. And you don't want to see someone like that now kind of either fall away from the game, go yeah. into business or just align himself just with the, with the Argentinian rugby union. Uh, it's brave of him to have, to have taken the approach that he did. But, geez, you know, I always felt if they're not ready for it now, when are they ever going to be ready for that change? Yeah. So, in essence, he needed three more votes. Uh, so, he needed three of, of, of Beaumont's votes. He, need, he basically needed Fiji and, uh, and Samoa. And, and Africa. You would like to think Africa would, would, have, would have gone with, with, yeah. with South Africa. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Japan, if they wanted to be part of an expanded Sansa, if they wanted to be part of the Southern Hemisphere... Um, you know, and that's one of the reasons some wolves are not going to be part of Sansa is because the original thing with Japan was you come into Super Rugby through the Sun Wolves. You then kind of support South Africa's bid, as we'd expect you to support Australia's for the next World Cup. And at the last minute, test matches were being played in Singapore between Italy and uh, between Scotland and France was doing something. And all of a sudden, Japan's votes went there. And um, so... So they were bought. Yeah, they were bought. And I mean, again... Everyone from the Southern Hemisphere is saying politicking must stop now. And more and more, there's, the heat's been put on, uh, the lack of transparency with the vote. Me, yeah. it's, uh, everyone knew at the end who voted for who, but it was like, be transparent in everything. Peugeot wanted global debates. He wanted to go on air with Bill Beaumont and just discuss things and, yeah. and try and just educate people about what he wants to do with rugby. His, his biggest thing was, I'm no Robin Hood. I don't want to take from the mm. rich and give to the poor. I just want us to govern a different game and along business principles. And already just the comments that Bill makes at 68, very much a traditionalist, played for the Lions, captained them, captained uh, England. Well, could you get more of a traditionalist than an English 68-year-old? Yeah, and going on to 72, you know, and it's just, I just feel they've lost, they lost a great opportunity. But again, who were the voters? Yeah. The voters were 60-year-old, yeah. yeah. traditional the relics that are involved in World Rugby. So we wake up to uh, uh, n no new world order. We wake up to the same old farts, the rugby being governed the same old way. It's very disappointing. Yeah, you just think within the executive, I think uh, if you look at, uh, at uh, MP and the, the comments he's made, 
I mean, Mark Alexander's on the executive, so he's made some strong comments as well about things that have to change. Yeah. Uh, you just hope that through that they can drive a kind of change. The big thing is let's get that global season going. Let's get it going as soon as possible uh -huh. where you would have the July, uh, the July internationals as we know them. The North coming to the South with weakened teams, end of a season. To take that out of the mix, uh, play your Super Rugby competitions or your European competitions, club specific then. And then October becomes the month that they travel here and we go November to... Uh, to the north, as we've always done, keep those two windows packaged. We then still play our, our rugby championship yeah. at a certain stage, and the Six Nations stays at a certain stage. And but each match counts for points on that world uh, championship log. So there's you have nothing yeah. as a meaningless test anymore. Well, that would yeah, I, I like that. Anyway, look, listen. Enough of enough about these these. these enough of the suits. Enough of the suits. <laughs>